Welcome everyone. Welcome to Cells of Consciousness. Your host Jeff Austri. Today's episode we have a very interesting topic. It's broken down into several different sections. It is what is desire. How can desire lead to suffering? Why do we suffer? What are the steps to overcome suffering? Why do we feel that we must eliminate or reduce suffering? And we'll talk about focusing on our needs. Again, welcome to Cells of Consciousness. Your host Jeff Forstry. What is desire? Your body is not at ease. So it's on ease. There is something else missing. Something you want from the future. Something you desire. Something you're looking forward to. An unfulfilled thing you're looking for. Something that will bring you peace, bring you happiness. That is desire. Desire comes from a sense of lack, missing something, incomplete, unsatisfied, living in the future for something good to happen. So if you're not utilizing your intrinsic motivators, which are the, the competence that you have, the wholeheartedness that you have, the mastery skills and talents that you have within you, that purpose-driven, that spiritual purpose-driven you have within you, that internal force, all the internal forces rather, that drive you, these are your intrinsic motivators, your anatomy, the willpower. Using those intrinsic motivators can help us reduce or eliminate suffering. If desiring is done using an unconscious expression or process, you will be clinging to the world all the time. Again, I say that. If desiring is done using an unconscious expression or process, you will be clinging to the world. Your behavior is a reaction to the social situation you are living in. And if your desires are unfulfilled, then suffering comes. Even if it's fulfilled, suffering still comes. Now how can now how can desires lead to suffering, you may ask? How? How can it? I know we all desire things. And we'll come into that. There's something we can't do without, I know. Something we can do without too, I know. Okay? So, how can desires lead to suffering? Desiring can lead to suffering when there is a sense of lack. A sense of unfulfillment, unsatisfaction, unhappiness. So until that thing is fulfilled, there will be suffering. It has to get fulfilled. If it's not, if that desire, that action, that whatever you're wanting, whatever you're craving is not fulfilled, suffering will come. Some people suffer in silence, yes, from fear, anxiety, especially anxiety. 
stress, pressure, and unbearable pain. There is suffering in this world. Undoubtedly, there is. What are we going to do about it? Some people often destroy their relationships with others and ruin their lives to satisfy their own selfish desires. Some of them will lie, cheat, steal, will fight, and even kill each other to satisfy their own selfish desires. As a result of that, they will suffer because these things will bring suffering, unethical, immoral. All these things will bring suffering upon someone. Selfish acts, selfish behaviors, from the disgrace. It is. When people become overly attached to their desires and expectations, it can lead to feelings of frustration, disappointment, and even depression when those desires are not met. If desire is fulfilled or unfulfilled, why do we still suffer? We tend to suffer through being dissatisfied, unhappy, unfulfilled, unachievable, living in lack and craving things all the time, even if we don't want it, even if we don't have the space for it. We'll do almost anything to have it. It's a desire, a physical, I call it disorder. Many of us worry about money. We need to stop inviting the suffering into our lives and instead bring in healing. Why worry? Even the rich is worrying about money now. Their millions is nothing. They need more than millions to survive now, you know, much as for me. So why worry about these things, man? We are unsatisfied, wanting more and more and more and more. Greed and wants control lives, clinging to comfort. Pleasure. Don't get me wrong. I like pleasure. I like comfort. But we'll come back to that. We'll explain. Everything is balanced. Yes, we are humans. Yes, we are in nature. We have desire. Yes, we can't do without it. Or some of it. Or all of it. Or none of it. You see? It's how you look at it. Your needs are the most important things. But we'll come back to that. Come back. We destroy our relationships with others and ruin these people's lives to satisfy our own selfish desires. And for most people, success is measured by the amount of material possessions attachments <laughs> that they have. <laughs> this is mine. All of those over there. <laughs> These. <laughs> those. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Therefore, these things, they bring suffering. You suffer because it's an illusion. You believe in these things and you build in attachments. You believe in form. 
You want to attach yourself to form. Okay? That's going to bring suffering. That's an illusion. This constant craving for every pleasant thing, heard or seen, leads people to suffer. And this constant craving lead people into delusion of bad habits. I know sometimes I work long hours. That's a bad habit, working long hours. I do, especially if it's interesting, like writing. And my time is very important. I'm very selfish with my time. What are the steps to overcome suffering? Let's go into some of the steps we can use some of these to overcome suffering. How do we eliminate or reduce desire? Wanting things, craving things. We should be, we should be more considerate, more respectful, and empathetic towards each other. Have more respect for others, especially the elderly people. Have good qualities and values. Become someone better. Have a longing to become better every day. Helping each other to grow, to develop especially in difficult times. Not put them down, not get jealous and angry, but be happy for people when they succeed. We also need to identify what is it, what causes the human suffering? What is it? What are the desires? Identify what are the desires, what makes you suffer and stop doing it, stop wanting it. Stop feeling it. Stop giving it emotions. Stop giving it feelings. You identify with it. That's what happens. When you identify with something, you attach yourself and the suffering comes in because you can't do without it. Is it buried in your subconscious mind? It's recorded in your subconscious mind. You see? So if we practice concentration of the mind, you raise your level of consciousness, you raise your level of awareness, you raise your level of mindfulness, you become a conscious actor, conscious in terms of you know what you're doing, there's a balance, you're aware of the desire, and there's only so much you can take, and only so much you can do, only so much you can hear and see, and you control those things, you balance it out the environment, the people, whatever it is, you control that. You're a conscious, being aware and mindful of all those things. Having a pure mind. You will suffer if your mind is impure. An impure mind is not the way to go. It's a bad deal. And your anxious will be, excuse me, your actions so with that impure mind, your actions will show that impurity. When you raise your consciousness, when you raise your level of vibration and frequency, you won't be disturbed by the negative words or negative actions you hear or came across from others. You're filled with peace, love, joy, understanding, compassion. So your mind and your body is consumed with those good thoughts and those good feelings and emotions. Therefore, you're not disturbed by any negative words or actions of others on the outside. So the external world does not control you. When you move, or when you find inner peace, no person, no one, no thing, no condition 
or no situation can disturb you or change your peaceful state of mind. Once you find that inner peace, no one, nothing, nada can change your peaceful state of mind. That's power. When you have nothing to fear, you said nothing to lose, right? You have nothing over which to be angry about. When fear is taken from you, all else can be taken away from you. And you won't be angry. When you have that such power, when you have such vibration and frequency, when you know your intrinsic motivators, when you use your faculties, your mental attitudes, you use all those powers within you, and you start using your mastery, your skills, your discipline, and you start creating things with your hands, with your head, whatever it is, you start creating things, using your mind, your thoughts, actions and you start doing things nothing can take that away from you you can repeat the process over and over again you will find out that you can live happily without any material things of the outside world because you are utilizing the power from within the internal forces, the, the intelligent forces that's within you. This is what I'm after. This is what we should be after. Craving, longing to become somebody better, to use all the powers within me to become somebody better. Detaching from craving, no chasing of pleasures. Have an inner peace. Paying attention to the present moment. Having awareness of thoughts and emotions. Having an understanding of what the nature of the suffering is, what causes the suffering. Stay away from the people, the environment, the things. Use your emotional intelligence. Use your emotional maturity. Use your emotional awareness. Using longingness, longingness instead of desire or wanting. Longingness, longingness to be better. Longingness to be stronger and wiser. Longingness to grow. Longingness to learn. Longingness to develop. Generate happiness from within. The desire for life to become the best version of myself. According to Mr. Anthony Noel, from the book of Metaphysics, New Dimensions of the Mind, he says, stay away from negative forces that shut you out from the land, the heaven within you. It's called the, Shang the Shangri-La. That's how they call it in India, I guess, in the Indian world. Shangri-La. Stay away from negative forces that shut you out from the land of heaven. That's, your, that's within you, your inner self. Things like selfishness, hatred, anger, greed, revenge, ignorance, animalism. My goodness. We have to. It's very important that we stay away from all these negative things. Negative forces that try, that try to control us, bring us down. Remove the negative forces that brings negative results. Remove it from your consciousness and supplant them with positive forces that can bring positive results. 
and you will enter that mystical land of the mind and spirit, which we call our heaven, that inner self. You will get to that mystical land of the mind and spirit, which we call heaven here on earth. So when you broaden your mental and spiritual horizons and have complete detachment from the bonds of materialism, you will discover this mystical land within you. Having pleasant thoughts, visualizing pleasant scenes, You see better and you start feeling better. Things start tasting better. You hear better and you detect differences in touch. Your eyesight improves. Your mind is clear, crystal like water. And you're aware, you're mindful, you're high in spirit. You can rejoice, be thankful, be cheerful, be righteous. Having that health and well-being, having a state of mind in which your thinking is pleasant, well, most of the time, it is very pleasant instead of unpleasant. Bringing pleasantness into the environment, having pleasant thoughts, bringing happiness inside and outside instead of unpleasant thoughts and unhappiness. Pessimistic thoughts. Dr. or Mr. Maxwell Waltz of a psycho cyber of a psycho cybernetics, Maxwell Waltz. He says the attitude of unhappiness is not only painful, it is mean and ugly. The attitude of unhappiness is not only painful, it is mean and ugly. I said we'll talk about needs. So instead of desires and sensations and physical and material objects, we can focus on our needs. We have spiritual needs, we have mental needs, we have physical needs, we have social needs. And they all come in all at once, they all come in once in a while, they all come in every day, they all come in every minute. Who knows? Lots of needs come in all the time. And they're very important. So if you move away from the desires and focus on the needs, the needs are very essential for life. Non-fulfillment of them will lead to suffering, illness, and even death. We know that. Now, on the contrary, desires and wants are those items that are desired either right now or in the future and they usually change over time so that's a that's desires okay and wants so desires and wants they fall into category of luxuries it feels nice to have them but we can live without them 
Desires are not essential for living and therefore non-fulfillment does not have a great impact on a person's life. Feelings of disappointment may be present, yes. But when you take desires and wants to a higher level, where you are attached to it, you're attached to form, where you can't do without it, it will lead to suffering, plenty of suffering. And if it's done unconsciously, where it's buried in the subconscious mind, it's recorded rather in the subconscious mind, then you can be clinging to the world. If desire is made in a conscious process, in a conscious thought, a conscious effort, you're less likely to attach to it. It's more of a longing to express life. Something that's within you. It's more of a longing to express life. That's what it is, a desire. So you're not clinging to anything. Per se. A longing to express, you know, for awareness and mindfulness. Now, why do we feel that we must eliminate or reduce suffering? Very important. I am not too sure if you can eliminate. If you do that, you might be a yogi or you might be very spiritual. Very, very, very spiritual. Because desire, man, it's, it's buried in us. Yeah. And even desire itself is desiring. Or even desiring not to desire is desiring. So either way you look at it, not to desire is desiring. Desiring is desiring. It's crazy. Anyway, let's continue. Why do you feel that we must eliminate or reduce suffering? We have established that life is suffering, right? We started out saying that. Unfulfilled desire causes suffering. Fulfilled desire still causes suffering. But we can become a better person. We can become better people, become wiser, become stronger. We can grow and learn and develop. Otherwise, suffering comes our way, which is not a good deal. According to Jordan Peterson, this is not a this is this is a bad deal, you know. If we have to suffer, it is a bad deal, you know. Um, so one way of suffering, or one way we can eliminate or reduce suffering is not to attach yourself to form, not to attach yourself to the physical, not to attach yourself to materialism. I myself don't. I don't attach myself to anything. I don't let, I don't let it get into my subconscious mind. It's not recorded. Therefore, it's not going to affect me. I have desires. I'm longing to become a better person. I'm longing to do this. I'm longing to do that. Yes. I radiate the idea into the quantum field. And I just leave it there in the quantum field. I give it, of course, the nurturing. I give it the attention, and the, the intensity, and the frequency. Yes, I do do that stuff. But I don't go out there saying, why is it not working? Why is it not coming? This is not working. I'm not going out there complaining and, and being negative. No, you, we all have desires, yes. But you balance it. You do, you, do, you do it consciously. You make a conscious effort, mindfulness, awareness. As to what is the desire? What what would that bring to my life? What kind of suffering would this cause to me, this desire? So you put a conscious effort into it. Okay. So we must stop identifying ourselves with the doing, with the form, instead of being. So you, we have to learn to be to be instead of doing. And that's the problem. The ego takes over. You become egoistic. Suffering is familiar to people when they are staying in the known. So that's I've, I've been talking about this, staying in the known. So 
and, and this, I have another podcast coming up and it's about the gap, the silence. I don't want to, I don't want to sell this right now, but it's the silence in the gap. For example, this one, uh, I think it was a meteorologist. No, he was a, he was a science guy. I can't remember what he was doing, but anyway, he was mentioned with galaxies and there are someone like Jupiter and uh, Saturn and um, some of the uh, uh, galaxies or planets, they have rings around them, right? And within the rings, in between the rings rather, there are gaps. Like in music, you have gap, there are silence, there are silent notes, there's silence in music. Well, the gaps bring out the music. The gaps create the galaxies, the other planet. It's within the gap, within the gap, you find creation happening. Within silence, you find creation. So that's why it's very important to be silent most of the time. Be very silent. So you have to balance it out where you can create stuff from the silence. You see? So that's very important. Anyway, suffering. Coming back to the point where suffering is familiar to people when they are staying in the known. That meaning that they are afraid to venture out to the unknown. So you have creation and creativity happens in the unknown. So once you're in the known, once you know the known, you know exactly what's going to happen. And <laughs> you can't can't live like like this, just knowing every day, okay, same thing, same behavior, same thinking, same thought, same patterns, same emotions, same feelings. I mean, every day, same thing, really? No. So that's what it is. It's, and that's what brings suffering because you're loving it. You, okay, that's is fine. I'm content. That's all I know. That's all it is. So you're going to suffer at, as a, at a, at a result, as a result of that um, comfortable Ness of standing in the known. You're not curious with life. Not, you know, not changing, not lowering, not learning and growing, not developing. That caused suffering. Plenty of suffering. Another way is to generate energies from within, as we talked about intrinsic motivators, using your intrinsic motivators, competence, relatedness, wholeheartedness, mastery, so forth, your you know, speaking, art, skills, whatever you got, the craft, driven purpose, once you're purpose driven rather, um, lots of things can happen, using the internal forces to drive your behavior, utilizing your faculties, as we said, your willpower from within to make a change, right? And each of us have a built-in guidance system within us. Each of us, there is a automatic a creative mechanism within us. There's an intelligence system within us. We are the living light, the consciousness to make a change change our reality. We are the only ones who can do that. Now, the longing part I said, the longing phrase, the longing word I like to use instead of desire. Longing for growth, longing for transformation, longing to become a better person. Longing comes from the heart instead of desire. Desire is a mind thing from the brain, a mind thing. Longing comes from the heart. I'm longing. I give it emotions and feelings. That's what I said. When, I, when, I, when I'm longing for something, I send it, I radiate that into the quantum field. That electrical thought goes out in the quantum field and I give it attention. I give it intensity and I give it frequency. Okay? Lots of feelings and emotions. Okay. But I don't I don't go crazy over it. I just let the process work itself in the quantum field. And then my heart, my emotions and feelings, my magnetic heart 
will draw that experience back to me when the time is right. Once I have that vibrational match with the match I'm looking for in, in that field, in that reality, you could call it the parallel reality of Earth that I'm looking for, that vibrational match. Once I get that, then I can manifest. It will come. It will attract to me. I don't have to go run around for it. It's a process. It's let the process work. Very simple process. Scientific and spiritual. Reason. We can understand where the suffering is coming from using our emotional intelligence, our emotional maturity, and our emotional awareness. Desire, on the other hand, is from the head, the mind, and is unclear. It's vague. And it brings suffering. When it's fulfilled or when it's unfulfilled, it's competitive. I heard one offer said, it's ugly, unhappy. I believe another offer, uh, Alan Watts says, one up against the universe. You want to have one up against the universe. That's desire. And peers. There is dissatisfaction, discomfort, displeasure, pain. Material possession bring suffering, emotional distress, attachment, unlimited desires create unhappiness and suffering. Yes, I've said this, it is natural to have desires, of course. But don't attach yourself to it. Do not. Again, wanting is not is unclear and it's from the head, from the mind. It brings suffering. Now, in summary, we talked about desire. We talked about desire leads to suffering. We also talked about overcoming suffering and we can eliminate or at least reduce the suffering that comes with desire. We said desire comes from a sense of lack, missing something, incomplete, unsatisfied, living in future or living in the future, living for the future, living for something good to happen. It will come, it's coming. I know it's coming, not living in abundance, living in lack, lack, lack. Never had enough, never have enough rather. You're not at ease, your body's dis-ease. Something's better coming your way, will bring you peace and joy and happiness, and I'll live better. Good luck, buddy. If desire is done using an unconscious expression or unconscious process, you will be clinging to the world. Suffering comes about by not utilizing the intrinsic motivators you have within you. Always unsatisfied, always wanting more, always in a pursuit of materialism. Greed and wants, clinging to comfort, pleasure, self indulgence. We need to generate energies from within, using our emotions and feelings, using our body and mind, or mind and body, have our mind and body in coherence, in alignment with each other, using our powers within us for creative ideas, to be used for creative ideas. There's a built-in guidance system within you. There is an automatic creative mechanism within you. There's an intelligence system within you. 
You are the living light. You are consciousness. First, we must identify what is causing the human suffering. What is causing the suffering? What is it? Identify it and deal with it. Remove it. Environment, people, things, whatever it is, we have to remove it. We have to practice mindfulness and awareness. Practice mind concentration or concentration of the mind. Raising our level of consciousness, raising our level, level of frequency and vibration. Freeing ourselves from greed, anger, selfishness. And make a conscious contact, make a conscious effort behind desire. Meaning longing to become someone better. Longing for knowledge. Longing for understanding. Longing for wisdom. Longing to help others. And if you have an impure mind, you will suffer. And if you're strong inside, if you have the willpower, if you utilize the intrinsic motivators, utilize your faculties and mental attitudes, you will not be disturbed by negative words or actions of others. What goes out, what goes on on the outside of you, in that external environment, what goes on there with people, what they say and do, cannot affect you when you are in a state of peace, love and understanding and compassion. Are you listening to me? Nothing can affect your peace. Sometimes you may come down from that high vibration after you have the information to help others on a lower plane. It's okay. You're not really falling. You're still climbing, but not at a linear. It's not linear. It's a little up and down, up and down, maybe one down, two up, one down, two up, but you're moving up still. You're never going down. But sometimes you have to come down to bring information to the people that need it, to help them. You can't be selfish. You have to share the information. And you're moving up, and then you're moving up. Sometimes some things happen. If you went back one step, that's okay. But you keep moving up. Some people don't understand that. There is no need to worry or have a desire of any kind, but longing to become a better person. Suffering comes about by expecting something to happen in the future. I will be happy when the house is paid for, when the car is paid for, when college, when the kids are off on vacation, when the kids are out of college. I'll be happy when such and such happens, when I win the lottery. I'll be fine. I'll help you. I'll... This is all disappointments. This is what's causing all this suffering, all these things we're thinking of, when this and that, when this happens, when this anxiety, stress, all these things are causing disease in humans. It's a problem. Your happiness is contingent upon solving some external problem. Your happiness is not coming from within. You're not using your internal forces, your intrinsic motivators. That's crazy. Yes, you cannot be happy all the time. Of course you cannot be. Everything's balanced. The day some things happen, you're not happy, of course. And living in a world that there is no unhappiness, probably miserable too. <laughs> you know, it goes both ways. So it has to be balanced. Unhappy, happy, you know, but most times happy. We can make a conscious effort, conscious intention, a 
thought, an idea, something, to be happy and think pleasant thoughts most of the time. Yes, we can. Don't make the little inconveniences, petty annoyances, frustrations become a habit and make you a grumpy, angry, dissatisfied, resentment, an irritable person. Don't. Push these little things aside. There are bigger things to worry about. Don't let these little things. The habit, most important thing here, guys, is that the habit of being happy enables one to be free from the domination of the outward conditions. To be freed from the domination of the outward conditions, the outward forces, the external forces that's out there. That's preventing the internal forces to go at work or to do its thing. Watch those outward conditions. Watch those external forces. Keep them a check. Keep them as your best friend. Keep a check on them. Don't let them drag you down. I thank you for listening to Cells of Consciousness. Your host, Jeff Austry. Have a pleasant day. Talk to you next time. Peace.